the snake eye from my wife. She's like, what you doing? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> One might love his switch more than his girlfriend. Man, I hope she's not listening to this. Please. And one's a dad who can't stop playing Rocket League. These kids yeah. these days, they're like, blah, 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 blah. we're used to jump and run. Together, they welcome you <clears throat> to a Gamers Lounge. Ah, uh, what's up? Hey, that intro does not get old. I love it. It's hilarious. It's on point. It nails us to the T. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, our good friend John is not here today. He is on a, a volleyball trip with uh, the Badgers volleyball, women's volleyball team. And so he had to go do his other job. So he's uh, awake. But we, we, got, we're, we got a full screen, as you see. So we're good. We got a good crowd in here today. We got my man Ben um, checking in as usual. And then good friends of mine is joining us, Shane and Brock Vereen. And uh, so, fellas, I'm glad to have you. Um, so, like I said, we do a little check-in. So, everybody, welcome into Oman Green's Gamers Lounge podcast. Uh, from you know, this is this podcast where we basically talk video games, or we talk what's going on in the video game world. If it's esports, or is if it's topics where you can't play certain music in your stream, or if one video game company is suing another. You know, we're gonna talk about all that today, and then we're gonna have a, a fun conversation called this or that. So we always find out. Uh, things we may not want to know about one another or something that was either TMI. You'd be like, man, that's too much information for me, bro. Uh, we find that out and do, do this or that. And then we talk about game releases, games that either we want to play or we are playing or we recommend that you play um, here on the stream. And then we talk about what's on stream. You know, we look kind of, we lost, we lost Brock there for a minute. He'll be back. I know the camera technology is always tricky, <laughs> uh, but we, we, we talk about what's on stream, what, what shows, what what limited documentaries, what movies we we're catching on all those streaming apps out there that the world has created to basically make a sentiment where we don't move on from the couch and from our house. Um, twenty twenty it worked out, but not twenty twenty one. I'm 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 trying to stay busy. I want to keep up and moving. And uh, then we obviously have a great conversation with our two guests here today. The brothers Vereen, you know, are in the house, so it's good to have them, and we get to find out what they've been doing since their football days you know we're actually we're actually teammates in, a, in another um i yeah, say absolutely. in another world so i'm happy to talk about that oh, yeah. today so uh to check in real quick from last week's episode and i'm looking at the run of show here i'm like ben i'm like are we on 77 or are we on like 80 because i know notorious she sent the graphic over and the graphic said 80 i was like how many episodes are we in is it 77 or is it 80 that's 77 <laughs> <laughs> we're we're somewhere we're roughly in the, in the just we're, we just round that thing you know yeah. we're you know 77 to 80 episodes in yeah. so we've been doing that for a little bit almost almost two years now we've been yeah. we, we get to the top of this year or to the bottom of this year we'll be rolling into two years of this show which has been going great and so you know i myself like i said i've been uh i'm, I'm froed out right now couldn't get to the to the barrack, to, though, to the barbershop. Man. The natural grow now. I like that. Man. Yeah, I know Drew's gonna Let see. Go. Yeah, I definitely letting it go. I know Drew's gonna see this. Like, what's going on? What's Amon doing? I'm like, no, I just couldn't make. I couldn't make it to the to the braider to the barbershop. You know, one of them days. Rock did before we jumped on here. How do those headphones fit, Amon? Hey, thank God that Lucid Sound LS. You know, a little shout out to my my people, Chris and uh, Tim. They got the little extended, you know, part that comes off and it goes up and down. Boom, boom. I'm always getting blocked out. Hey, but, did hey, did you ever have your hair that long uh, when you was playing and had to fit fit your helmet over all that hair? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. In college at Nebraska and in Green Bay, I did. Um, I had a little afro. I was getting braids, and every now and then I'd be like, "Look, I don't want, I don't want to do the braids." So I had that extra cushion. There you go. In the helmet, which actually, what felt good. It felt really good. I could hit more yeah. back, back 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 when i actually had hair i uh i had a big fro too and it just fit it just came right on it's nice extra snug fit yeah, you know yeah it's that, i like it it's yeah, that like oh it. so uh so like i said i've been kind of hanging at the house i had a good friend a kid that i used to train he's a little you know he's uh, about 20 early 20s and so when he was in high school he came out he flew off to green bay and i trained him a little bit he's a football player a uh, running back he basically had the he had, he's built like Jerome, like Jerome Bettis built. A big kid, but can run um, the football. He's from, uh, as I call it, as he, we both call the desert. He's from Boron, California. So if you could find Boron, Boron. I'll give you a cookie. I'll give you a cookie oh if you could find it. Or I'll send you near, some headsets. <laughs> is, is it near like the Mojave? 
As yes, you yes, yeah. Ooh, you're close. Just, yes, you just, nailed yeah, it. I mean, I've never even heard of it, and I'm from and I'm from California. Yeah, I, I mean. Yeah, I don't, Boron. Yeah, Boron. I mean, when he said that, and then me growing up there, me being there a lot, you know, yeah. I was like, I was like, that has to be between Vegas and LA. I was like, that's got to be in the desert. He said, sure enough, it's like the Mojave, the start of the Mojave Desert. Boron okay. just sounds like it's a, like 150 degrees. Yes, year it is. <laughs> it's yeah. a, it's basically a mineral. They named it. That's when you know you're in a small town when they name your town after the mineral that is found yeah. there. And so okay. I can't remember what the mineral, he said it, to, he explained it to me years ago, but I, I got to Google it. I don't know what exactly what boron is, but I know it's a chemical. It's on the chemical chart, the mineral chart okay. and everything. So we, he came in. And so my man, you know, he's a football fan. Obviously we watched college football. We watched the uh, NFL football. We went to it. We actually went to the Monday night Packer game against the Lions, which was great for uh, experience for him. He hasn't really, that was his, actually his second game that he ever experienced here. And then okay, I, question for you. Question yeah, for you. Did, did you stay at the game when it started raining? Oh yeah, we were there the whole game. Oh, okay. We stayed through. Okay. Yeah. All he right, wanted right. to, you know, I, I, I do. I know I'm well. No, hold up, hold up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I would have done what I usually do when I go home, when I go to a Packer home game, regardless of the score, I'm th in the third quarter. I'm out. Yeah. Okay. I'm start watching the game from my phone as I'm leaving the stadium because I'm by, I'm trying to beat traffic. Okay. I'm yeah. I'm speaking real life right now. Yeah. You know, because yeah. when you leave a stadium, I don't care where you're at. The number one thing on your mind is avoid traffic. I don't yeah. want to get stuck on the freeway. I don't want to get stuck on some road. Let me yeah. get out of the area as soon as fast as possible. So, but for him, you know, he's like, man, I want to see the game. I want. I'm like, oh no problem. So we stayed, watched the whole game, the rain and everything. Came ready, okay. brought my jacket, you know, so I was prepared. Cause I, I saw the forecast, my, and it's it just cause my wife yeah. though, cause I never watched the forecast. Just letting you know, full <laughs> disclosure. I, I just let the weather surprise me. Yeah. Basically, here I mean, in the Midwest. I mean, and the way I look at it is like the easiest job in America is to be a meteorologist, right? Or to be yes. a weather person, cause you yes. never have to be right. No. You never have to be right. You know what I mean? So you wake up in the morning and they say it's going to be 75 and sunny. Two o'clock rolls around and there's a thunderstorm. They're like, well, sorry. Yeah. Didn't, you, see, didn't see it on the radar. Right. It could get, like you said, 50, 50 percent of the time they're wrong and they still okay. got a, and they still got a job. Now, if you have that, if you have that percentage doing any other job, most likely you're fired. Well, yeah, unless you're a baseball player. True. You only, have to, you only have to get a hit three out of ten times. And you're, but, you're the best hitter on the team. Very true. Very true. Here, I'm looking in the Twitch chat, and Big B says, Boron is in peanuts. I'm like, what's that mean? I got you got to, I got to figure out. You got to help me out with that, Big B. And then Big B just asked where Brock. The second time. There you go. They were just asking for you, Brock. Some of my Twitch. Uh, my I, group. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's the point of paying taxes if, if this is going Cut off, man. The internet, yes. Oh my God, that's the one thing I, I call AT and T. Every I stopped calling them because they just was not <laughs> helping me get a bigger uh, broadband to come through this home, and I'm paying extra so I could feel the pain there. Um, uh, there, Brock. So yeah, I don't, I don't get it. So, so yeah, we watched. So beyond the football, we actually chilled the rest of the weekend. We watched a little bit of college football, but. My man, you know I'm a movie guy, guys. You know Ben knows this, Shane Brock, you know this. I'm a, I'm big time in the movies, and he's like, oh, I hadn't seen the Godzilla movies. I said, what? I said, you haven't seen Godzilla and Kong and Godzilla King of Monsters and Skull Island. You haven't seen none of that. He's like, no. I'm like, oh, I know what we doing this whole weekend. We binging all the Godzilla movies. <laughs> can I can I can I be honest? What's up? <laughs> Can I have a moment uh -oh. of transparency? Uh -oh. What's up? Okay, go. Ahead. What's up? What you got to say about Godzilla and King Kong? Uh, if we're gonna talk about <laughs> movies about like uh. big, big monsters and like in that realm of the sci-fi of King Kong, uh -oh. Godzilla, all that. Uh oh. Uh oh. Godzilla, the weakest one of them all. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 Explain. Mean, I gotta know why. I gotta know why. Arms. Uh, he ain't, his arms is so tiny. Yeah, he got he got <laughs> he got these right here. In, in, in Jurassic Park, were they afraid of the T Rex or the Raptors? The Raptors all day. The raptor, right? Yep. So, so what that's a good do? point. That's, let's that's just let's point. just make a big old lizard T Rex, and the movies are terrible. <laughs> 
Let's just make a big old T Rex, and then all all of a sudden, in the new Godzilla, now he can now he can spray out like. Well, he could always do that. <laughs> he could always hey, do that hey. though, but it was just bad special Two effects back point, in the eighties. Two, Two shades trash. Point. Two shades point though. Two <laughs> shades point. They wouldn't have had to give him all those superpowers in the first place if he was an actual threat. They had, they, they yeah. had to add stuff on, yeah. which, which is only fair. <laughs> only fair. To your, I, 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 I agree with the points because when you're watching it, you know, we, we obviously, I watched recently, watched all four movies. And what I noticed about compare King Kong to Godzilla, King Kong had personality. You know, he was, you know, he's grunting, but you could tell, you know, he's saying pretty much. He's not, he's, yeah, he's conversating yeah, yeah. without conversating. And then he's picking up things like he'll pick up a tree, clear off the branches. And he got a knife basically, or a spear. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm saying. Bro. You know, that's all I'm saying. Bro. Like, think like when you're dealing with King Kong, things just got real. You're like, oh, just, oh, he just, yeah. he just ripped the tree out, took the, the stump off and said, I'm about to, basically, I'm about to stab you and then throw yeah. you across Yo. the. The planet in, in, in Skull Island. If it weren't for those those three those two arm three, oh the uh, whatever, whatever those things were the skull monsters. monsters. They was called the skull <laughs> monsters. Yeah, no, they, everybody was dead. If yeah, if there were no skull <laughs> monsters, everyone's done. You ain't getting off this island. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> all right, all right. We got the definition. All right, from uh, the Twitch chat. So yeah, boron. It has pe. It's, it's known for peanuts. And then uh, Eeyore says, it says so many. What are we talking about? About the boron. We were going back to boron real quick. (laughs) And so, and then also uh, Eeyore says, boron is a flaky metal. It's on the right side of the periodic table. So, bam. So uh, the city is known for peanuts and then a flaky metal that's on the right side of the periodic table. Just want a full disclosure there. I like my peanuts without the metal. (laughs) <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I like I like them the way George Washington Carver used to use them, you know. Right. <laughs> organic, right. Organic. Oh man. So yeah, that was my 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 check in there. Ben, what you got cooking, man? What's on what's going on since last episode? Uh, I went up to see my um uh baby brother who's still in college at uh, UW Stevens Point. So that was cool oh. to see him. Wow. Thing. And then I'm watching Monday Night Football because of course it's the Packers. Right, right. right. Sometimes I get a little tired of the guys, Steve Levy and whoever else is doing it this year with him, Brian Greasy. Um, so I go to that alternative broadcast on ESPN2 with Peyton and Eli. Yeah. I've I been forgetting to check that out. Me too. I forgot oh. too. I didn't it's know where to cool. find it. It's I didn't good. know where to okay. find it. It's on, it's on ESPN2. It's on yeah, ESPN2. I got to check that out. And it's at the same exact time as like as the regular broadcast. And it, it's so much better. Because I mean, like, it's us, it's players. Yeah, let's start like, there first. But yeah, but like it's informal, but at the same time it's more formal. Like it's more information. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just kicking it, chilling, ha- throwing jokes back and forth. But because it's not so like formatted the way TV is, you have right. to say this and then get out. So like the play goes, and then you got have it. to wait. You have to got lay it. out when there's this, that, and the third. They just talk yeah. and. They can get into so many more of the specific details about football that, like, the, the casual viewer never really hears or that you never really get a chance to even say. Right. Like, when I'm right. calling right. games, I don't even have a chance to really get into, like, the intricate right. details because you only have so much time to talk. Uh, it's, Correct. In my opinion, it's the future of what broadcasting will be uh, yeah. when it comes to fo- big, the big football games. All right. Peyton Manning and Eli don't need no more money, though. They're good. <laughs> just saying you, you might be, right? they could pass that to us we could do it yeah. give it to ESPN yeah. give it to Shane Brock and I and Ben and John we can handle this we could you know we understand yeah. Twitch we already work here we good they yeah. don't have to yeah. come yeah, in our they you're, can have you're, 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 you're not wrong you're they not got wrong. super you know Shane how many Super Bowl rings you have just one alright so that's good one. that's good that's good because uh, Eli and Peyton got yeah. that, they got all that and MVPs on top of that so they can have, they good. We could yeah, give us, give the, give the little guy, yeah, you know, yeah. give the running back something. Running backs and DBs, come on, uh, man. Why, why, why is the running back position, we, we get devalued, you know what I mean? We Oof. get little drop-off passes, run for 30 yards, and it's passing yards. Like, right. quarter, quarterback just pitched it to me, and it's a and it's a pass? It's a reception. Like, huh? Come on, <laughs> bro. Come oh. on, man. We, oh, we yeah. Gotta, we got we to gotta sit down and, and change it. I said that on the air last week, actually. Oh, nice. <laughs> there was like a little pitch, and originally they put it as like a pass. And I'm like, 
Why? He pitched, he pitched <laughs> it. He pitched it a yard and a half. They try and pad those and stats. The running back did all the work. I'm like, it's, it's just the it's just the brand of football that we're in these days. All right. Honest. What you got, Ben? Uh, ben, were were you were, were you satisfied with the Monday Night Football performance of your Packers? I was a lot happier than the game against the Saints. I don't know if I'm still happy. See, this is what's it's so challenging being a Packers fan for this reason. Okay, I understand how uh, I don't know what the right word is. Lucky we were to have two Hall of Fame quarterbacks back to back. Yeah. But be coaching football on top of playing football, it. It is a struggle to me sometimes to continue to watch Aaron Rodgers. Now, he'll make some amazing throws, but Mm -hmm. I think he's forgetting that as he gets up there in age, some of the things he used to be able to do, like throw off a one foot or jump in the air and throw with no feet on the ground, I don't know if he can do those things anymore. But I don't know if Aaron is somebody that's willing to listen either to people. So I'm very grateful because he's still playing at a high level and he's still doing really good things for the pack. I'll say – Oh. Yeah, he still looks like he could jump and throw the ball. He still looks like he got the nice yeah. little ponytail. I like the long hair. I like the ponytail, you know, because obviously uh, now, uh, you know, I got ben, the pro Ben, I, I have, I'm going to ask you this, only you, because I know Shane's answer and Amon is too close to the organization. <laughs> when we say, say this is the last year of Aaron Rodgers as a Packer, it sounds like he's in Denver or Oakland next year, whatever it may be. In your opinion, do you think the Pack? the Packers as an organization did enough to maximize his talent over the past 12 years. No, I do not think that I think literally this is Brett Favre 2.0. I don't think they have surrounded him with enough talent. And I have a friend who's a diehard fan. And every time during the game, he continues to, in this group chat, we have throw out there the list of draft choices from the green Bay Packers. Yeah. Actually, third round draft choices as they just dropped or they cut uh Chase or Jay Sternberger the other day. Mm, yeah, yeah. Oh, they did cut him. Oh wow. Didn't know that. Yeah, they cut him. It's it's rough from draft choices. And then somebody oh, who uh bu- 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 Pat McAfee joined that Monday night. Yeah, draft. I saw that. Pat was on it. He's crazy. Pat's off the chain. And he said to Peyton, he said, Peyton, could you imagine playing for a team for as many years as Aaron Rodgers has? And they never asked you about personnel, guys you'd want to sign. Not that they're going to listen what to What was Peyton's them. answer? Peyton goes, no, I can't believe it. I can't. Right. Who was his G in, in Indy? Uh, Bill oh, uh, Ursay. It was Ursay. Oh, Polian. It was Ursay. Oh, Ursay, Ur- 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 I think, is the owner. The top, top dog. Oh, he's the owner. And then Polian was a GM. Right. Yeah. yeah. And Pe- said after my first year, he sat down with me. And we talked about guys that I want to bring in, guys I'd like right. to see on the team. Because I know, or I knew that he wasn't going to listen to everything I said, but it was nice to feel like I had a voice, you know, in the team. So, right. no, to answer the question, right, I do not know that they put enough talent around him. But at the same time, I'm okay if they move on from Aaron Rodgers after this year. Yeah. I really am. I'm okay with that because yeah. being a smaller market team and not having an owner, and I know there's mm-hmm. a salary cap, and all the structures in the NFL, yeah. but we have to, in Green Bay, look toward the future. We have to yeah. kind of what we do with the Patriots. They let a guy go maybe a year too early, two years too early. But you have to do that sometimes, especially as you're trying to build for the future. Just my opinion. Exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, if, if you go back to that ring was 2010 or 2011 over the Steelers. Exactly. 20, so, yeah, 2011. I mean, it, it, it was exactly. 20, 2010 season, 20, but 2011 20, Super Bowl. 2010 season, 2011 Super Bowl. If you go back there and you say, okay, you have a, we'll call him 27, 27-year-old Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, they're going to keep surrounding him with talent. If you if you asked me then how many rings would he get in Green Bay, I would have said three or four. And I, I fear that, say Aaron Rodgers retired after this season, I fear that his legacy will be what could have been if they gave him the help that like like it, it it's 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 like the Bucks having Giannis realizing they have a generational talent and then just not surrounding him with anybody. Right. You, you know what I mean? Like, like yep. I think you, you have to realize this is a once in a lifetime type of guy, put the pedal to the metal, spend whatever money, however long, like whatever it takes. Cause like you don't just stumble across uh, Aaron Rodgers again. I, I, I hate that his legacy will be of course the Super Bowl, but also what could have been right, if right. they gave him what he deserved. Yeah. Yep. And the Packers have had 30 years of hall of fame quarterback play and they have two rings to show. <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. Per- perfectly summed up. Yeah. All right, all right. We got uh, I, we started the pod, we started the stream as a video game podcast, but now we're talking Packer football. Just letting y'all know, full disclosure. There. Um, <laughs> to the Twitch chat here to go back. Hold on, I gotta I gotta rewind a little bit to the Twitch chat. Eeyore says, "Amon, he said, time to kill the feed. Godzilla is Godzilla. King Kong <laughs> is a super big gorilla." <laughs> <laughs> all right and then yeah we're, we're kind of like and he also says we're kind of going like on a dodgeball the movie you know esp yeah. and the ocho we're like the ocho right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i like that comment from eeyore there and uh rome freak said what's up what's up rome freak how you doing and uh we got some agreement there to uh ben's comment about agreed uh far 2.0 you know where you're not maximizing and giving my man the weapons that he needs to put that ball in the air and win games so um so yeah all the good you know, chat here and we got a lot of packer talk now we didn't we didn't start the ball rolling here what's up ben what you got <laughs> i brought up that alternative monday night football broadcast because they have people jump in via i don't know t- uh, twitch or whatever right not tw- or zoom and far joined him this past week oh, yeah. and they were t- ah. i mean this was a joke about how he was the originator of the rpos because he would just scramble <laughs> his own thing and yeah. you know, i could have vouched for that yeah, <laughs> so they so they showed a clip of Amon uh, rolling out and Minnesota game. Him. Yeah, and he just underhands the ball, and Amon dives in the corner of the end zone and catches it. So it's cool to see my buddy AG. Yeah, so it was a good thing Dorsey had warned me. So you know, Dorsey Levens was still on the squad; he was the starter. And so that game, you know, it was just full happened. I was in the game, and during the week and during this trading camp, he would tell me all the time. He would pull me. He's like, AG, come here. You know, we'd be sitting there talking, you know, me getting used to the team, getting used to Brett throwing balls. He's like, hey, the one good thing, like two things about Brett. He said, when you throw us the ball, being a running back, you know, we're not that far from him. So we don't have to worry about a bullet pass. You don't have to worry about breaking, <laughs> getting, your, getting your fingers broke. He said, so that's one. He said, but the other thing, you just got, it's like playing street ball. You just got to be ready for whatever. I mean, he might, you know, like we were talking just about uh, pitches being passes. You might be expecting a pitch, and he shot the gun that thing to you, you know. So you just gotta be ready for whatever. And so on that play, it was a uh, what was it? I think it was eight six. So basically a a, a quick uh, flat play for me to get to the flat right away. No no uh, blitz responsibility, and I was ready. You know, as a running back coming out, you know, you ready for this to see that motion, and and he's getting pursued, and he when his when he's running the ball, he dropped it below his waist, and I'm like, okay, this ball is about to come different. Okay, let me get, <laughs> let me get ready for it. So I was like, all right, underhand pitch. Oh, right, here we go. Boom. I was like, man, I said, just just catch the ball. Don't worry about how it comes to me. Yeah, catch the rock. So uh, so now I say I'm officially bring y'all in. We've been talking Packer football for a good five ten minutes here. But I'm officially bring um, my I say my new teammates in from the last couple of years uh, of we all work for a company called ESTV. I've talked to all my greenies. So the greenies. Uh, some of the usual suspects here in my uh, Twitch chat, I call them my greenies here on my channel, guys, so you know that. Mm-hmm. So my greenies know about what I've been doing with ESTV and what we've been doing with ESTV and, and growing that uh, that channel there on Samsung Plus, and it's all, it lives in a lot of places right now. I, I kind of lost the mind, the list of the names. I just say Samsung Plus. Lot. At least I know it's, it's at, on Samsung. If, you, if, you, if you're on, if you have a, if you, if you have a brand new Samsung TV, Go to Samsung Plus. We're like channel 13, I think it's 13, 17 or something 57. like that. 57. Or 57. There you go. Different channels. There you go. We're in there. Um, and uh, look for ESTV. But uh, these guys came in same time I came in. We were both brought in by, I say, really by a guy by the name of, uh, um, God, I'm going Blake right now. Uh, Mark. Mark Watts. Mark Watts. And he intro- he all, he all introduced us all to uh, Eric Yoon, who is the CEO of uh, ESTV, who who's done it before? He uh, developed a, a Korean channel called Two K Four, Two K Twenty Four, and then another one that actually broadcasts nationwide here in the United States. And uh, he had done uh, the uh, esports, I say, channel stuff before, and but now was doing delving back into it now hardcore because, as we know, as gamers, as we know, you know, as I know, and everybody in the Twitch chat know, it's uh, esports is here. It's here to stay, and it's growing. And it obviously, just like traditional sports, there's other avenues of, of, of things to talk about in terms of esports, of video games, the developers, the companies, the competition, and obviously what the gamers do beyond, you know, when they're not playing their game. So, you know, myself, Shane, and Brock, we all understood it because we're we're we're, we're gamers. 
You know, even though we played football for a living, we, we banged around and got hit. But then on our downtime, we were grabbing a controller. And now, because of me, these two guys have PCs in their homes now. Because I told them, that was like our first conversation. I said, guys, y'all have a PC? They were like, no. I'm like, you got to get a PC. I was like, y'all got to get PCs. And they both have them now. They got, look at, he got, like my man Shane got a mic, you know, he got the headsets. I'm loving it. I'm like, yes, big brother. I done helped him out get get into the game. So guys, how are you guys doing? Hey man, I'm good. I can't complain. Yeah, the first time I saw the PC, you, it was in the, it was in the office at ESTV and you actually had like the, the, uh, the laptop version. Yeah, I had a, my, actually the one I'm on right now. Yeah, yeah the, and I was like, wait, they make laptops too. I was like, okay, you know, <laughs> if it's gonna if it's gonna help me get more kills, it's gonna help me score more points. <laughs> yeah. then, then I might need to go ahead and make the switch. And yeah. I, I'll tell you what though, it's been the best investment that that I've made uh, in a long time. It was it's it's everything I hope for and more. Right, or help you how to stream. You guys say you're gonna have to stream. You yeah. have to jump on too. jump on the mic. You already do it with your yeah. jobs that you do now. So uh, let, let everybody in the stream know what, you know, we'll start with Brock, what you're doing now, um, because you're both basically still doing, you know, uh, the traditional side of shoutcasting, which is broadcasting um, sports. Yeah. So let's start with Brock telling us what you're doing and uh, hand it off to Shane from there. <clears throat> yeah, outside of ESTV uh, with the Big Ten Network. So I do the pregame show. We're, we're on site. We're on campus. Uh, thankfully, COVID um, restrictions allow us uh, to still be on campus. Uh, so we are on at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, if you're on the West Coast, uh, go ahead, set that alarm for 6.55, get up to 7. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this, this, let's see, our first week, we were at Iowa on campus right in front of the stadium, leading into Iowa and Indiana. Second week, we're at Michigan State. This past week, uh, we were at Michigan and tomorrow night i'll get on a red eye and fly out to penn state and uh yeah we do the pregame show we kind of run through the um the the big 10 schedule if you will for that day what we expect to happen and it's a blast man cannot uh can, cannot complain one bit nice nice because uh, last i know remember when we uh, started working together with ESTV, you were doing uh like the coca-cola I was doing suit. the high school games it was a high school, yeah. but you were doing the interviews with college, well, with pro players. Well, yes. I remember you yeah. interviewing Alan, yeah. Alvin Kamara, yeah. Mark Ingram. A lot of you interviewed a lot of running backs, which was great. Um, a lot of running backs. Reminiscing yeah. about their college days. So tell us how, what was that little uh, yeah. sizzle reel call? It was somewhat Coca Cola, correct? Was it? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was uh, a company called Campus Lore. Um, yes, right. And we got to, uh, yeah, man, we we got access to really anybody in the NFL. Um, it it was right, funny so. because th- thanks to uh, thanks to the NIL now, college mm-hmm. college athletes can now rightfully um, get paid, monetize their college yeah. experience. Yeah. Um, but before that, you, you couldn't. So really, you had to talk to NFL guys to talk about their college experiences. Mm-hmm um but it was a blast man the uh the uh, stories that we we uh, got and just meeting everybody was was incredible um while i was doing that i was broadcasting uh the high school games out here in southern california uh with fox and now that has led to uh the pregame show uh with big 10 network so uh football kind of uh seems to be the focal point of everything nice nice i saw that i, saw, I was like oh I'm like, oh, you're in a different little setup now. I like it. I'm like moving <laughs> on up. My man Brock is moving on trying, up. Trying, man. I'm trying. Okay. We are trying. Gotcha. All right, Shane, what you got cooking, man? What's going on with you? Yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> I mean, obviously ESTV, um, you know, and now it's been getting so busy, man. EST, I mean, it's exciting, though. Right. Um, Super busy. Of that, yeah. Dirt, I mean, the fall is typically my busy time. So I'll do um, NFL radio every now and then, uh, serious NFL channel, and then um, – I'll also, I call games for Pac-12 Network this year. Uh, I have my third or third game this week, this weekend. I'll be in Seattle. I got uh, Cal, my uh, alma mater, against, uh, against UW. Uh, but it's fun, man. And if I'm not calling games, then I'll do the, uh, the Pac-12, Pac-12 After Dark studio show, uh, which is late. Oh, uh, but, yeah. so y'all can have some fun on there since it's after dark. Oh, that's what that, that's what after dark after dark basically <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. says anything goes. We can make it happen. Man. Exactly. Keep the party going. 
Yeah, and that's why that's why I like it so much is because it, it's laid back. We're just chilling on couches and and really just talking about you know the games that had happened um, that day. Uh, and so yeah, so that those are, that's kind of what what I have going on right now. Um, and then you know new stuff pops up every every spring and, and yeah. summer, and then the fall is typically the same. Yep, same here because I'm uh I'm um I know Ben too. If you want to join me, I'm doing a podcast with uh, Mike Wall. He was one of my offensive guards here in Green Bay, so I just started that podcast. And of course, we've been breaking we've been breaking down the Packers, and that's been fun conversation for two weeks. Two, you know, you get Saints stomp, stomp a <laughs> yeah. stomp a mud hole in them to yeah. they destroy. Well, I say beat the Lions. The Lions yeah. actually played pretty pretty good there towards the end yeah. of Monday Night Football. So here in the Twitch chat, the the, the, the Greenies are getting restless because we got to get to the gamey question. So a question that. Yeah. That y'all answered when we did our first uh, shout casting up in Tacoma, and it basically was so. Well, how we always uh, ask the question is, you're going your gaming origin story. Who got you gaming? Who was it? What game it was, or games, game or games, and how old were you? And then obviously, then y'all could go into basically who dominated yeah. the Marine household. So I know it's a few yeah. questions in there. So the first question is, what game? did you start gaming on when you're uh, younger okay i'm gonna i'm gonna start this one just because i'm older and so it's because well <laughs> well not only because of that but because i started playing to i mean obviously i started playing before brock did right but right. when uh i don't know how i was probably in kindergarten so like Ooh, five like or six, six yeah five or six Ooh. six somewhere around there maybe maybe first grade but i remember we were in our old old house mm -hmm. and i had a tv in my closet and we had a Sega Genesis. I had a Sega Genesis. In the closet? Yeah. What's yeah, up? Yeah. I got. Hey man, I didn't know that. Humble beginning, sir. Okay. <laughs> so at least I had a plug in there. You had yeah, electricity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, had, Good. we had it hooked up. I don't know how how why it was in there because that was the only time I was ever allowed to have a TV in my room. Okay. Up. But anyway, I had it. And the first two games that I remember are Sonic. And this other game that we used to play called Toe Jam and Earl. And Earl. Oh, yeah. I, I played that. Toe Jam, Toe Jam and Earl's off the Toe chain. Jam and Earl hey, used to go. Toe that's the go Earl. hard in the paint. Yes, it did. I agree. Yeah, that, that, we need to bring that one back. That what? Go. They got to bring it back to next gen. Yeah, they got to do yeah, next yeah. gen. Yeah. That was oh, a dope yeah, so game. That was fun. Those, those were, as far as I can think back, those were the first two games. And then I think when um, when Brock kind of got old enough and we started playing. N64 was big. Okay. What was the first? What was that? What was the NFL game? B? NFL what? Quarterback Club '98. Oh yeah. yeah. There we go. I think it, it was like either Phil go. Sims Brett, Brett or Brett was on the cover. cover. Okay, Brett it was, was Brett. Yep. yep. Okay. Oh man, that's cool. That's cool. So, uh, who was the dominator? Who was the the lead honcho? If we're talking Madden, uh, it was me, of course. Uh oh. <laughs> I, I had I had the most dominant madden run madden 07 Ooh, he was they had a dynasty was I, it a dynasty I, I, a full-on dynasty i would say <laughs> as the new york giants and i would go in and i went an entire calendar year without throwing the football i would go goal line package with brandon jacobs and get six yards of pop oh the games would be like seven minutes long because i'd run the ball every play <laughs> i'd get seven yards every time and i just beat everybody like 14 to 10 it was miserable to play against me but that, like, we are talking like Shaq and O2 level of just domination. So that includes uh, Shane, too, not playing, not wanting to play against oh, you, right? Question. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man, this is great. This is I great. love it. Hey, you know, you notice how you started at 07. You know what happened at 07? I graduated <laughs> high school and I left the house. So you. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? Uh, hey, hey, I'm just saying, all I know, all I know is if we're talking Madden. My favorite Madden was 04. Madden Vic. 04. And was that because, Michael uh, Vick on the cover? Michael, Michael Vick, Vick. Yeah. Michael Vick was on the cover. And I used him every now and then, but I was a big Niner fan. And uh, okay. Me too. I would, Me too. I would kill people with uh, T.O., uh, mm -hmm. Brandon Lloyd was in the slot, and then I think yeah. I had J.J. J. J. Stokes was on the other side. Yep. We had, it was a problem. Uh, like Garrison, a Garrison Hurst was my running back. And Jeff Garcia was the quarter, bro. Yeah. I was putting up points, sir. <laughs> points. But then, but then in 05, they, they it was the invention of the hit stick. Oh, yeah. I, I was it? Yeah. I couldn't. 
Bro, I, 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 was, well, but, getting, I was getting torn up in 05. With, uh, with Ray Lewis on the cover, and I mean, if you had a well-timed hit stick, it was a fumble every single time. Yeah. I, was, I was miserable. Yeah. Oh, it was terrible. It was hard. Every single it, time. It killed my, my entire offensive scheme. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know what to do. But then I finally got back. Oh, sick. With, did they have the vision cone in 06? Or I hated 06? that thing. I hated Wait, the vision the cone. On the cover, I, I hated the vision cone. Yeah. I was throwing yeah. so many interceptions because of that darn oh, thing. Oh, because it basically, it, if you didn't throw it where you were looking, yeah. it got yeah. picked. It was. I was yeah. like, come on, man. Like, come oh, on, man. Yeah. Man, get off my line with that one. Get off my line. Yeah. I don't get off my line. Like, no, <laughs> man. What the what the French toast is wrong with y'all? Y'all tripping. Yeah. That was, you know, I, had my, I, love, I love and hate EA. You know, we had a... Uh, Last week, last week we had Clint Oldenburg, one of the executive, basically producers of EA. So he, he knows it's a love hate relationship with that game yeah. because of the things they change from week in to week out. You know, uh, trying to adjust to the competition and all that craziness. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, so so with your broadcasting experience from both, you know, where y'all both at right now, what is the hardest thing about sports broadcasting when y'all get ready for a, a show or an event? I would say. It's tough. Film study is tougher than playing because when you're playing, right? Mm -hmm. Like I play defense, so I had to study two things. I had to study our defense and the opposing team's offense. Mm -hmm. Now you have to study all four because, like I said, when I, when I was playing defense, it, I didn't care what our offense was doing. I didn't care what the other defense was doing because I wasn't on the field for it. But now having to study all four. Uh, yeah, it's just a lot. It's 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 just a lot of football. Of course, I love it, uh, but I think I took for granted. I only had to worry about one phase of the game uh, previously. Gotcha, Ben. What you got there? Good there. Do you guys like doing broadcasts better when you're like on campus or when you're on site, or do you like doing doing it better when you're like in your um, uh, studio? Are you kind of creatures of habit, or which one do you enjoy more? I like being there. Sam. Yeah. You feel the energy, especially around college football. College football is all energy. And, and as soon as you arrive at the stadium and you see the fans and you hear the excitement, you get the smell of the grills and the popcorn and, yeah. and everything. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's such a different experience. You hear the, hear the school bands, you know, fight songs. <clears throat> um, it, you know, that's what I love about, that's why I love doing college football. It's just like, it's just yeah. a, it's such an energy student sections everybody's yeah, excited huge. you know and, it, and it's great uh, for the hardest thing for me i would say two things one kind of what brock said like i understand offense very well but like i understand defense from an offensive perspective mm -hmm. so when i'm calling a game and i have to really go into detail about what why defenses are shifting my answer is still from an offensive perspective, because I never, I played defense in high school, but like I never learned really like gap, gap control. Mm -hmm. or I never really learned why the safety is dropping low, you know, just so those intricacies. Um, from a defensive uh, side of the ball. From, from a defensive yeah. standpoint. Yep. Other than that, the hardest part is uh, when there's like, when it's a blowout or when, or when <laughs> there's like a play that goes nowhere and you have to say something <laughs> right. Really, right. All you want to say is that was a terrible play call, but you can't, you can't say that too many times in a game. So trying to come right. up with something, trying to come up with something to say when there's nothing to say. Yeah, that, that, I agree. That is definitely one of the hardest plays, uh, hardest things to do. Because I hear guys in commentation, and I'm like, did he just say that? Did he meant to say that? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what the French toast did he just say? So we got a, we have a good question here from the Twitch chat. We got Rome Freak asks, he's just curious. He said, do you have to play, have to have played professional sports to get into a sports broadcasting? Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. I mean, look, I mean, Stephen A. Smith is a perfect example. That right. Man, that man, that man runs ESPN and. Uh, and, and, and his game. mouth. He runs his, oh, my mouth. God. Yeah. oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. yeah. But him, I mean, call it coward. Like, you just have to have – you just have to know sports, know the game to where your opinion about it makes sense and you can back it up uh, with facts. You can't just be like – you can't just say Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback ever 
with no definite. Like exactly. Because I like him, you know, because I'm a Packer. You can't say that. You have to have actual research. And, and I think it's actually harder for the guys um, that have never played a sport because their validation comes from that. When, you, when you've played a professional sport, your validation is, I was a professional in this sport. Mm-hmm. So when I say something, it's because I know it. It's because I've been there. I've been in that situation. I've played it. So you don't need as much validation because you are the validation. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you got that experience. If I talk about it, what you got, man? Is it harder for you, Shane, and, and for you, Brock, to take somebody like Colin Cowherd or Stephen A. Smith seriously because they didn't play the game? When I was playing, yeah, because I, I <laughs> because A, I didn't really understand the media space, and B, I, I just hated their takes because – um, well, I, I know when I when I was even in college and in the pros, when, when I was in season, I never watched ESPN. I never watched, never listened to talk radio. I never paid attention to any of that because more times than not, they're not saying anything that I really would want to hear. And even if they said it, they were probably wrong because they didn't know what was going on in the locker room. Now that I understand media, I understand why they have such strong opinions and why you have to be intriguing and all, and bring viewers in and all that type of stuff but i used to hate it yeah and like Stephen yeah, a drives I, me nuts uh, okay. <laughs> i was gonna yeah. say Stephen a Clearly. drives Clearly. me nuts because i like he he like starts slow he likes quiet he's all this calm tone then within 15 minutes he's talking like he's like <laughs> yeah he is yelling at the top of his lungs and i'm like Stephen a bro I can't even, I don't even get your points now. What's your point? <laughs> because he's yelling, he's yelling like a five-year-old in the, in the kindergarten class that hasn't had his nap yet. It's like, come on, man. Yeah. 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 My bad. Yeah. What was you about to say, Brock? No, it, <clears throat> yeah, I, I always have and to this day still get frustrated when um, a media personality ha- who has never been in the locker room talks about locker room stuff, right? Like, mm. have your opinion on... Kevin Durant on anything that's uh, publicly shown, right? If he posts something on Instagram you want to talk about, go for it. It's a public thing. His play against the Timberwolves last night, talk about that because that's a public thing. But when you get the people are saying, uh, oh, his his locker room is against him. It's like if, if you've never been in that locker room, I don't want to hear – you don't know what a locker room against an athlete looks like. Exactly. You, you don't know when a team has given up on a coach. Like you, you don't, you don't know that. You know what I mean? Um, so that always frustrates me. Uh, whereas if Ryan Clark or Joe Thomas or Deion Sanders or You're a Booger, Booger McFarland, I say Booger McFarland. He does a good job. And say, yeah. Hey, it looks like this receiver is giving up on his quarterback. Okay, because you know what that looks like. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, but yeah, I, I I was always frustrated when playing, but then w- once once I stopped playing and you know started getting the media stuff, you kind of realize it's it's entertainment. And yeah. if you get mad at Colin Cowherd because of what he said about the Cowboys because he's not a former football player, well, unless you make movies, I don't want to hear what you have to say about the Avengers movies, right? Unless you make music, I don't want to hear what you have to say about the Drake. You, you know, right. what I mean? like it, or it, you, you, you can't have it both ways. Right. Um, so, 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 like I said, the, the the super personal stuff that you need to be an athlete to understand, lay off of that. But yep. having an opinion about somebody's performance, it's it, it's it's fair game. Yeah. Or press the mute button. <laughs> that's what i do <laughs> watch another channel i, I press the mute button channel. i press the mute button i'll be like come on i'll be like but it's really you it's, you you hate Stephen a smith like and not that i hate now hate hate is strong hate hate is a strong word okay i just i totally dislike because it's just the yelling and screaming is it doesn't make sense. i get that's that's just that's his thing i get it and like you say shane it's an entertainment thing that's what brings people back for what he does that don't work for me, you know. Obviously, we don't do that here. Me, Ben, and John, when we're we're having a good time, we're laughing. We're if we're loud because we're laughing. Somebody said something funny. It's just like I'm like, dude, where are you? Go? I'm like, come on, Stephen. Hey, I know you a smart guy. I know you highly intelligent. You know, come on, you could you could do something better. So uh, to go to the Twitch chat real quick. So what's up, Mad Max, a fellow Greeny there. We have Roger the Dodger says I think it's nice. So talking about what we we're just talking about, you know, in terms of broadcasters and their opinions. So Roger the Dodger says. 
I think it's nice to have a mix of broadcasters because generally the play-by-play -play guys are much better at hyping it up or keeping it moving, but the former players have good uh, commentary. You know, they bring Absolutely. that in. So yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. No, I definitely agree with there's, that. There's, there's a reason why the majority of hosts and okay, like all of your analysts, basketball, hockey, football, soccer, whatever, mm -hmm. are former players. And there's a reason why the majority of hosts and play-by-play -play are classically trained. They went to Northwestern. They went to Syracuse. Like, like they're, right. they're very much professionals. Just because they're not former players doesn't mean this is not something they work really hard for. Like, go to M Mizzou, Syracuse, um, USC. Like, those broadcast schools, like, that's, one, hard to get into. Right. Two, hard to – be at top of your class you know what i mean so they 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 earned it for sure they they just didn't learn um by being on the field they learned you know from a classroom which is totally fine yeah right. and i could never do play by play oh like, really I, I don't have i, <laughs> I don't thought have, you i thought you did i'll be honest i thought you did <laughs> i i don't have the vocab for play by play i don't have the on the spot creativity like gus johnson is unbelievable oh. Yo, yeah, yeah gus is awesome <laughs> gus oh is awesome so, so, sometimes he'll say something you're like eh, i shouldn't have said that gus but i think he's like he's brilliant in a sense yeah. uh like you know uh, like that play by play stuff i i that's too much talking for me i i could not like, I like gu gus gus johnson does a he he may do a college basketball game during the week. He's doing the 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 Fox noon kickoff game on Saturday, and then he's doing an NFL game on Sunday. Right? Say what yeah. you want about him. Say what you want about Joe Buck. He's doing a, a a World Series baseball game on Wednesday, and then on Thursday he's he's uh he's doing a Thursday night football game, and right. then Friday he's back at Dodger Stadium doing a World Series. You know what I mean? Like like right. I don't care what people say that's about it. Like, that's hard. That is really, really hard to do and to make it interesting. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's definitely a grind. So uh, something that y'all experienced for the first time with me a couple of years ago, like I mentioned already, was that first shoutcasting event for y'all. So mm -hmm. how was that experience um, up there in Tacoma at uh, Lewis Base? Was it Lewis, uh, joint, was it joint Lewis McCord yeah. uh, Air Force Base? Mm -hmm. How was that? So we're talking about commentating, you know, but obviously mm -hmm. in the esports world, how was that first experience? And what, did, what was some things that y'all were like, okay, I got to do this you know, next time if we, you know, when we do this, because we did, you know, later on that year. So how was that first experience? Well, I mean, <laughs> luck, you know, I was like, that's the shout casting stuff makes me nervous, man. But luckily at the, yeah. luckily we were doing Madden. Yeah, we did, man. Yeah, that was an easy thing. Madden, so, so that, that made it easier uh, for me, but it was definitely a new experience. It, I mean, it was fun. I remember me and Brock did a, um, uh, just from the house, but we did like a collegiate Rocket League shoutcasting. Oh, nice! And I didn't really know much about shout uh, much about shoutcasting, or much about Rocket League. So I'm watching like YouTube videos about Rocket League, right? And then I'm like, nervous. "Good move, good move there, yeah. good job." <laughs> and, and, for, and for being honest, I took a shot of tequila right before just to, <laughs> to, to, to lose to lose that. Uh... Yeah. yeah. But like it's it's a whole new world because you know you don't want to just be out there and just saying just regular stuff that anybody could say, you know you kind of want to have some opinion and some insight, right? Um, and so when you when you're jumping into a new space, um, and you're the voice, you know it's it's a little nerve wracking, but it's a learning experience, and I, I like I enjoy it, man. I really do. Yeah. Right. One of the things that make um, in person traditional broadcasting right like a a um, a non esports event. Um, easy, not not easy. Easier is because, say, somebody makes an incredible one-handed touchdown grab, like a Odo Beckham type catch. Mm -hmm. um, you could stutter, stumble over your words. You could say the wrong thing, but because you're excited and people are feeding off the energy in the crowd, it's okay, right? But with esports, what makes it difficult is there's no. If you're watching on Twitch at home you're not seeing the crowd, right? You're seeing mm. the animated crowd. But right. so with, with shout casting, I always have to remind myself, you have to bring the energy because there's no shots of the Iowa student section going crazy. There's right. no shots of the players on the sideline going nuts that you can feed off of. So you have to deliver that as well. That's, um, I think that was the biggest hurdle uh, for me. Gotcha. Yeah, it's because uh, I, I remember because y'all I remember y'all were at the table. 
I had to roam around a little bit, do some uh, yeah. Yeah. some you, beat, you, you some b roll. Shoot like a three minute intro in one take or something. Right, I was doing I was doing a b roll. Yeah, I was doing all that. You know, yeah. I I, think, I was like, uh, yeah, I've done these before. And when as soon as I said that, I was like, oh man, what they gonna have? They had me doing everything, <laughs> which was which was good. You know, I, it gives me yeah. it gives me that same that same type of experience there. So uh, so we're gonna switch switch lanes a little bit. A couple more questions here. Uh, so uh, for the most important question between brothers here uh oh who was the better football player <laughs> i'm giving it to him the, the guy has has a super bowl ring without question i will say this though i i would love to see uh i, I would love to see him in a Big Ten offense against Big Ten defenses, and I would love one game going against. I mean, we played U- USC, but I, like a season playing in the Pac-12 because, as 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 you know, Amana obviously Nebraska was in the Big Twelve, but you you guys played a run dominant type of football. It's yeah, it's it's amazing how different a game it is. Like I I would watch Shane's games that whenever I wasn't playing and when mm-hmm. he was at Cal. And seeing Washington State go out there and throw the ball sixty times, yeah. and then I'm playing <clears throat> Wisconsin that night, and they're going to throw the ball thirteen times. Like it's it's just such a different, it's yeah. such a different game. Um, uh, yeah, so that that's what I would love to see. Oh, okay, yeah. good, good answer. I say yeah. good. You know, I was, I, I would say that we were brothers, obviously, but right, very very different football players. Uh, where our our build is different, right? Brock's, offense, Brock, defense, Brock, Brock, offense, yeah, defense, offense, yeah. defense. Brock's taller and leaner. Um, you know, I kind of have my dad's build, where I'm like mm-hmm. five ten, but like like bulky, stronger. Um, so I, I think that kind of that excuse. So we, so I'm not saying one of us better than the other, but we were ju- we were just different players. There were things that I would see him do when he was like eight nine years old. Um, one thing that really jumps out to me was he had a, he had a run. He was at running back at the time and he Mm -hmm. had a run up the middle, went through the line, broke out to the right, was one-on-one with the corner, but the safety came from an angle that I didn't think he saw him. Brock spun move on both of them. And it's, and I'm, I'm (laughs) I'm, I'm watching from the end zone because, um, my, it was pop Warner. So my game was after his, Yeah, and I was like, (laughs) Oh, how did he just do that? <laughs> you know, like nice. I, I'm, I've never done that before. Uh, I thought I was pretty good at the time, you know. So, I, I, so I can't say. I think he did some things that 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 better than me, and, all, and vice versa. I think I did some things yeah. that that better than him. But we were just hundred percent. We were, we were pretty different players. Right. Oh yeah, great. Oh yeah, I like that. Uh, as, especially like for the spin move, I always saw that. I'd be like, hey, bro, you gotta teach me. You, you gotta teach yeah. me that one. <laughs> Yeah, I, like, oh, man, I, do that. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't big in the spinning, but if I see something impressive, I'm like, all right, look, hey, you got, you got, we got to go in the backyard. You got to show yeah. me this one. Right here. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, next, uh, I know Ben got a question up here for y'all right here at the bottom. <clears throat> yeah, I was going to ask you guys this on Twitter that you guys were part of a um, uh, celebrity poker tournament. How did that go? Is it poker? You good at poker? Well, seeing as I was the first person out of the tournament, uh, <laughs> see, oh, my, man. my philosophy my philosophy on any card game, whether it is an online tournament, which was awesome, uh, Rob Gonzalez puts on uh, the, the, the tournaments that we're happy to Yeah, from, uh, on from UGL. Yeah, UGL. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so shout out to Rob uh, for putting that on, and there will be more in the future. When I look at anything, uh, any card game, dice game, Vegas casino game, right? I just push it to the limit because my, my thinking is this so much of it is based on luck. Yes, there's strategy, you know, they're, not, they're not, not everything that. is roulette or craps where it's all luck. Right. But I still think of it as so much of it is out of my control. I'm just going to push it to the limit because statistically, the longer I'm here, the more things I can screw up. So I was all in from the start. I said, I'm putting all in and things were looking good. But the problem with going all in on every hand is when things go bad. Yeah, they go really bad. I think I was in that tournament for like three and a half minutes. <laughs> oh, man, that was quick. Oh, man. It was, it was bad. I mean, it yeah. was bad. It's like card games right in the locker room and, you know, longer trips. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, play. yeah. We uh, we used to play uh, this game called Boo or Boo Ray. Oh, uh, Boo Ray, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. When I say Boo, I don't know Boo Boo Ray. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Boo Ray. That game gets expensive, but I, yeah. I've I've noticed um, <laughs> like as I, I think I think God when He created me, <laughs> what He did was He said, "Okay, I'm gonna give you athletic ability, and you're gonna be smart." But when it comes to anything that has to do with gambling, you're just gonna not have that. <laughs> That's a good you know, thing. You, you know, should know. Yeah. So I learned a lot, like I learned like some of my first couple times in Vegas, 21, first time in Vegas. Hey, no, no. Um, no. I, don't, I don't. I don't win when I gamble. I, good. I don't win. I've never walked away from a gambling situation and been like, yeah, I really took their money. No, <laughs> yeah. you know so. I've luckily I've trained myself to be like, okay, if I'm in Vegas or if I'm playing poker, all right, am I trying to win or am I just trying to hang out and enjoy for a little bit? And <laughs> cause I know I'm not going to, I'm not going to win money. I know I'm not like, it just yeah. never happens. So, you yeah. know, see, see, it, that's why I stay away from like poker, blackjack, any cr- craps. Everyone's kind of on the same team, but anything yeah. where, my decisions can affect your hand. Nobody should sit next to me at blackjack or poker because I'm, I'm going on. I'm, I'm pushing everything to the limit. Unless I have 21, I'm hitting. I'm, I'm ruining everybody's game. So uh, not people are mad at you. Money. I'm losing every. No people hate, hate sitting next to me at Vegas. 19 hit, hit, man. I said hit. Now hit, go. Man, those man, people get diabolical. Everybody. They get diabolical. They get mad. I'm, I'm here to get 21. That's it. That's right, right. I, I see people get seriously <laughs> mad when somebody oh, is, is hitting is. or or shouldn't be hitting. Oh, they people go off. They go off. Very, yeah. Oh man. So uh, so in the chat here, we got Rome Freak says blackjack is easy easy to win. There's real easy methods of card counting. So he's trying to he's trying to be like Rain Man up in there. We got to be careful. See, see, he's, <laughs> he's 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 trying 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 to get me drug. <clears throat> In the back with the guys, right? With you don't want that. In the track suits, <laughs> nah. To smash my hand with, with, with And they say, no. they say, forget about it, forget about it. That's when, when they say it, man. <laughs> and they got, like you say, I got a hammer and the and no, you be like, all right, we good. I'm come on, come on, come on, come on. I made a mistake. I'm, it was I made a mistake. <laughs> I wasn't trying to do that. Trying to do that. Now, now, now I'm out there in the middle of death valley about to dig my own grave no. right now no don't want to do that <laughs> don't want to do that all right all right so uh real quick let uh let everybody know what's what's ne- what's coming down the line for y'all in the next uh i know we know we got the season of commentating going on um yeah. but what's you know with, along with that what's coming up you know between now and, and the start of the year start of the new year Ooh. uh i mean really not much you know i uh Hanging out with my daughter. Got an eight yep. month old at yep. home. Hey. Uh, hey. Yeah. We got Uncle Brock uh, over here and got Daddy <laughs> Shane. Best job in the world. Yep. Best job uh, in the world. Uh, you know, so you know, I'm, I'm awesome. trying to get my KD up on, on Warzone. <laughs> uh, I hear you. But, you know, but, they get that KDA, yes yeah. sir. Oh, it's I important. Ask you, how did you manage how did you manage with your kids to continue to keep your game sharp? What I, I what I did was you know obviously they had they had school so between you know obviously getting them, getting them off to bed at school so I would put them like when my kids were looking my kids are grown now but when I was playing that's when I had them and so I would get them in the bed by between eight thirty and nine o'clock so that gave me a good hour and a half because I try to go to bed around eleven eleven thirty um, during the week so I try to had to get a good hour hour and a half in a bad night was maybe basically nothing. Um, but a good night, I would get the full hour and a half of gameplay of some Halo or Madden back then. Even now, it's the same thing. Now, I have no kids, so that's why I stream, and then I can play my Madden and, and my Halo. Get my that's the best. So that's you got to figure out that that time because you know they got to get to bed. They got to get that sleep. Keep them babies, especially when they under the age of one, get that sleep down. So then mommy and you can have a great night of rest yourself and get ready for the next day. But then also that game time too could get in there. You can sneak that in on, on mama. Like, hey, hey, babe, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do this real quick. Yeah. Come on, this, yeah. this, I'll be back in two hours. <laughs> you can be down there all night long. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, not, not, not too much, man. Just not too much after, after the season, just uh, enjoy life and, and getting ready for next year and make sure ESTV is in the right spot. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, of course, you know, the uh, football season is in full swing. So this is this is the um, not not the focus, but it is a focus. Mm. Um, and then ESTV, of course, big things coming down the pipeline that we will be uh, excited to announce soon. Um, just main maintain it, man. Uh, hopefully, uh, this COVID thing will hopefully uh, <laughs> behave a little bit, and we can, you know, get a little more. I, I don't really. I mean, I haven't outside of work. I haven't left the state for fun, other than like one time in the right. last year and a half. You know, that that's kind of frustrating. Hopefully, you know, can 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 sneak out somewhere for Christmas or something like that. But uh, ESTV and football, two things that I enjoy a lot. So nice, same here. So uh, so on the screen there for everybody in the Twitch chat, we have their. Uh, Twitter and Instagram where you can follow them and check them out. Oh. And uh, I know Shane, or actually they both do a good job putting uh, any recent videos of them in their uh, in their jobs doing their child cat or not child casting, but sports broadcasting, their pregame leading into the game they're covering for uh, college football. So I know they do a good job with that. So check out Brock on uh, uh, Brock and Shane on Instagram and Twitter. And I know we got a little bit of time for Ben if he could do this or that. Then I know he has to run, so we could take us to this or that, Ben. As you guys can have some fun. Yes. Uh, or that. All right. No John Adis this week. I'm not used to hosting this segment. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> up. All right. So we always start this or that by letting everybody know these questions are straight from the mind of Amon because they may be weird. They may be funky. They may be whatever. So. Oh, God. I wake up in the middle of the night just writing things down. Oh, like, oh. Uh, All right. So the first one isn't that bad. Would you rather be stuck on an elevator or would you rather be stuck on a ski lift? Mom, why don't you show them how it's done? Um, all right. So I've been to Vail or Aspen a few times and definitely would not be one of stuck in uh, on a ski lift because of, of the weather factor. I have been stuck in an elevator and it's not that bad. So elevator all day, every day. When it's below and cold on the mountain, no. no I don't want none of that. Um, none of that. People will freeze to death, okay? Will not do that. So, elevator. I will take the elevator being stuck in there, done it before. Thank God for cell phone and reception. It worked. So, there you go. All right. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> what you got? Ski lift. Really? Ski lift. Eleva e elevator short sighted. You did not say how long we're stuck in. We're stuck for a long time. What happens when you got to go to the bathroom? Now I got to establish a pee corner? Nah. Yeah. I'm I'm a ski lift. I got a bunch of air down below me. Ski lift. I'm establishing a pee corner. I'm gonna bust. <laughs> I'm gonna bust a hole in the wall. Me, like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going, I'm going elevator because uh, me and heights are the best of friends. <laughs> and, and if I'm up on that ski lift and you know, like a slight breeze comes and that ski lift starts to swing, <laughs> nah, and see? I'm looking down. And mm -hmm. like I got skis or a snowboard attached to me, and I'm like, this can only go one of two ways, and both are bad. Uh, so I'd rather establish a pee corner or piss myself <laughs> than be, be stuck on a ski lift. Oh, man. All right, there we go. So Big B says elevator. He does not want to freeze to death. Bam. Another oh point there. God. Boom, All for right. Big B in the Twitch chat. All right, next yeah. one there. Ben. Or ben, did you go? No, I did not yeah. go yet. I'll, I'll go. I'm claustrophobic. Yep. Give me the ski lift all day. If I'm stuck in an ele elevator, man, I'm going crazy. I could not. Could not do that. So, all right, our next right call. Is, right call, man. Oh, thank you, thank you, Brock. All right, so this next, this or that, this is where it gets a little funky. Uh oh. Would okay. you rather have nobody show up to your wedding, or would you rather have nobody show up to your funeral? Wedding, because you know how much money you just saved. <laughs> <laughs> you know how much money you just saved. Wedding. Bam. Good point. Yeah, wedding. Wedding. Good point. What you got, Shane? Um, I had to talk this one out. <laughs> if no one's at my funeral, I'll never know. You will. There is the afterlife, bro. Yeah, but it does mean that I clearly was a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> or just a bad communicator, you know? Maybe it was yeah. just that. A bad you know? communicator. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't communicate what the funeral was. Yeah. I just, I, you I know. The time. <laughs> Wrong date. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I would say, yeah, <clears throat> I'd rather have nobody show up to my wedding. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. Ben. Gotcha. 
Yeah, I mean, I think this was tough because if nobody. Oh uh, wait, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold on. Is this meaning that your spouse does not show up either? I should, I should have clarified that. Mm. I like That's that. A, I like that little twist in that. Uh, she not, if, if that uh, it's a it's a runaway it's bride situation. Than, than I thought. It's yeah, a runaway it's bride question, question too. Yeah, okay. dog, you just threw a curveball there, right there, bro. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a tough question. All right, uh, so if anybody show up to my wedding, then I'm not, you know, recouping some of the funds I spent on, you know, wedding gifts. So that would suck. <laughs> then I go to three point two. Like, if nobody shows up to my funeral, I must have been a pretty crappy person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's tough, man. I think I'm going to have to go with a wedding, too. I think I'm going to have to, but that's really hard. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going that's with a wedding. I'm, I'm going with a wedding. You know, good point. Save money. You know. It's <laughs> a good question. Yeah, good question. that's a good question. And even with the wife, the runaway body situation, yeah, you know what? All right, I'll save money. All around and and and, 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 you just said. and stress <laughs> money and stress here uh real quick rome freak says here back on the uh elevator one he said we had a flood here in omaha he's from my home state go big red a couple months back and someone was stuck in an elevator and then it started filling with water see nah that nah, is messed nah. up he said wow nah. he said he's out he said he'll take the ski lift off of that there we go <laughs> i'm like yeah if you throw that in there yeah yeah that's torture method that's one of them scary nah. movie things no that's all you gotta it. do hey. is, you ain't never seen mission impossible pop the ceiling out and climb up the little <laughs> yeah <laughs> there you go if yeah if push come to shove push come yeah, to or shove or just float with the water up you know it's gonna be like <laughs> 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 oh man. All right, Ben, what's next? <clears throat> All right, that. Would you rather be a wizard or would you rather be a vampire? You know my answer to this one, Ben. We did, I think I did this one before. Or we did vampire with something else. So, But we got new new cronies Are here. Are you going to be a vampire then? Is that what you'd rather be? Yeah, you know. See, you know me. You know me. I love be, I love vampire movies. And they, they, they I can live forever. Bam. You know? Have yeah, a goon yeah, squad. I'm going... I'm 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 going wizard because vampires do too many things at night. I like getting my sleep. They're 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 up at all hours of the night. You you have you have to be invited in places. I'm pretty spontaneous. I like to randomly go see a movie or go to a restaurant. I don't need to be invited. I don't want to be have to be invited everywhere. That's a and good I cook question. With a lot of garlic. I, I cook I cook with a lot of garlic. I can't be a vampire. That's a good question about the movie theater though, because I love going to movies. Yeah. And if I'm a vampire, that means that means I have to be invited to the movie theater, bro. What if you I just want to go? Everywhere, man. Ex see, see. Ah, oh. well. Okay, that's a good Gandalf point. Gandalf was a G. True. Gandalf was, <laughs> Gandalf was cold blooded, man. Yeah. I'm going, I'm going wizard hands down. You <laughs> I'd be the line of the podcast. Gandalf was a G. Yeah. We're going to clip that. We're going to clip that right yeah. there. I'm just saying, man. Uh, what you? Gonna, yeah, I think I'm going to go with uh, Wizard as well because yeah. if I'm a wizard, I can cast spells. I can do different things. Yeah. Huh? Hey. What do I really do with mine? Can I turn into a bat, I guess? You can do all that. You're a wizard. <laughs> I feel like I, I feel like facial hair is frowned upon amongst the vampire community. Whereas <laughs> wizards' facial hair is embraced to yes. you know, yeah. you a lot of robes it. with, with nice silks and, and, and cloths. You know, it you just have you have the blood obviously when you suck somebody's blood. The blood, blood would, be out in the beard would, would get old. You but gotta look out for 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 werewolves. Aren't vampires what? and werewolves beefing all the time? You know. Yeah. yeah. Is it, wait. Is that all that vampires eat is blood? Is that it? Think Pretty so. much. So that Pretty they never much. go like in and out and nah. they get like a good burger. It's gotta be. <laughs> it's basically. It's basically gotta be raw. The blood, oh. and it's gotta be Ooh. freshly killed. That's the only thing. I remember I seen a few vampire movies where they were trying to have an alternate. You know, obviously not drink the blood of a human being, and the only thing that worked was a fresh killed animal. So cow, fox, whatever. That's a lot of work. That's, too That's work. a lot of work. <laughs> hey, but you fast. But you, when you a vampire, you got that that supersonic speed. You can yeah. chase anything down. Yeah. So you good. And uh, yeah, and then you come at me and you shall not pass. And there you go. You <laughs> hey, you better have you better have all the garlic and the what is it the the holy water, all that ready to go. I'm I'm have Emerald Emerald Lagasse with me, bam, baby. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna saute some onions right in your face. <laughs> oh man, that's funny right there. All right, what's next, man? What you got? 
Uh, would you never be, or would you rather never be able to take an airplane again to travel, or would you rather never have internet access again? Mm. Ooh. See, I, I go first in this one. All I right. would never have to take an airplane again. I don't like flying, but I do love driving. So I'd love her, or I'd love to drive. And also, I'd like to throw this out there for uh, anybody that hasn't taken like a cross country train trip before. All right. Really beautiful scenery when you take a train across this country. So I'm good with never uh, being able to fly again. Now, what you been? Same. Yep, Same. I'm good with that one. Same. Uh, internet, okay. yeah, it's hit and miss already. I, I, I don't need the internet, but if I, I, I don't. I, I, I remember, you know, being 32 now. I remember life. I remember life before it. <laughs> you said 32. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you was gonna say like eight, you know. You said thirty-two. Uh, no, uh, but like, I, re- I remember, I remember before internet was even a thing. You know, you call your friends on a telephone and you speak to them. You know, and if and you know and that's it. You know, uh, yeah. But if I'm trying to get somewhere because without the internet, if I want to get somewhere, I want to get somewhere now. I'm not the most patient person. I do enjoy a nice train ride, though. I do enjoy it. Yeah, train rides I've done. But I, I would choose to be able to fly and not have internet. Okay. And uh, to the Twitch chat, back to the vampire, Big B said you could do a spell to turn yourself into a vampire. I don't, I don't think that's the smartest oh. thing. I don't think that. <laughs> if, if you're, loophole. Yeah, it's it's a, loophole. A, yeah, it might not be the smartest thing, but there is an option. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and then Rome Freak and uh, Eeyore, I believe, are both on the same thing. It's, I'm keeping my high-speed internet. Eeyore is a gamer like myself, you know, they're, they're keeping that internet, keeping the internet. All right. Yeah. What's up next, Ben? <clears throat> this one could get, uh, could get ugly. Could... Oh, all right. Oh, so I'm assuming it's, do you like the music better of Michael Jackson or Drake? Or is it, which one was a better performer? Am I? Which one was okay. I brought this up because I was watching, uh, Charlie man, the guy, um, uh, breakfast club yeah. Yeah. and they, and, and DJ envy, Brought this. I think they just did this to harass uh, Charlamagne. It's a, thing on, it, it's a thing on Twitter right now. Right, talking it's about started a couple of days ago. Yeah, Drake being like, a better performer than Michael Jackson, so it's performer. And of it, course, to me, it's hands down. It's Michael Jackson all I day. I don't. I don't okay. understand how that's art. Right, that's not even I, art. No, I don't think it was the performer because that's. It was the performer. Yeah. It was performer, and who brought up the best dance? Like who created the best dance trends? That was it was too. Po- that, that's that's not possible. Exactly. So exactly. I, I think the, the the better question would be music musically, like who's made a bigger impact or. It was all that. It was like three questions they asked. Oh, okay. Charlemagne okay. and he at Charlemagne was passionate. Like he was like about to punch somebody. He was yeah. so <laughs> mad that they. He's like, why do you even ask me this question? Yeah, you no, know. I'm with him there. That yeah, that, that that's absurd. Right. That, that's. You, 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 you've seen those old Michael Jackson videos when he's on tour and like girls are passing out when he, he, he. <laughs> right? Dudes are pa- dudes are passing men, out. Grown yeah. men are passing yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Men are passing out. I, 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 I ain't never. Seen, I've, I've been in a lot of clubs. I ain't never seen one girl pass out with Kiki. Kiki. <laughs> no. Nobody passing out of Kiki. No. That's what I said. It's, it's Michael yeah. Jackson all day long, man. Yeah. So my point, and then another point. Remember. I don't know if y'all remember this, but okay, because I'm what I think I had 10 years on y'all, 10 to 12, because I'm 44. So okay. MJ, when his videos came on, he shut down the whole network. He was on ESPN, Fox Sports, yeah. uh, CBS, NBC, HBO, MTV, MTV yeah. yep. VH1. He was on the Ocho. He was on everything. Oh, okay. I remember oh, when Joe. that video, uh, Remember the Time, came out. Okay. Mm. The Super Bowl right, team. it was on yeah, every it was channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was on. Yeah, yeah. I was flicking through the channels. I was growing. I was still in L.A. in down in Lamert Park, and I'm flicking the channels. I thought I was in, almost like a bad dream. Like, wait a minute, it's on every channel. It was on every channel. I'm like, I'm like, what the heck? I'm like, oh, I'm like, but this is Michael Jackson. This is all good. Okay, it's good. So yeah. Mm-hmm. MJ. Young Eddie, Eddie Murphy was in that, and Michael. My, and, uh, Magic, uh, Magic Johnson. Johnson. Magic Johnson. Young. They just needed yeah, to throw I, Bo I, Jackson I, I, I in that think, thing or somebody. I, I think what what people need to realize whenever it's who's more popular, Justin Bieber or this person or Drake or this person, anyone from that era reached the same level of fame without social media. 
Oh. And I think once you factor that in, like people in Berlin knew Michael Jackson's music word for word without yeah. the internet. Like yeah, exactly. once once you factor that in, you realize like yeah. you're not gonna touch the Beatles. You're not gonna touch yeah. Michael Jackson. You're you you you're, you're, you're just not. Prince. Yeah, yeah. I would say you're 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 you're. you're, you're, you're it's not even a contest. So we kind of know where that went, that question goes. So in the Twitch chat, the same thing. Rome Freak, Roger Dodger, Big B, um, they all say MJ. Hands down, 100%. King of pop. Good doing the greenies. thing. The greenies got it right. Yeah, the moon the walk. Are on it. Sha-na-na-na. Hee-hee. That's what, that's, what, <laughs> that's what Big B. <laughs> That's what Big B put in here. I was trying to, you know, word it out. I was what, trying what to word. He said, he said, he said, Shimon and on. He he. Shimon. Shimon and on. Oh, that's what I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to enunciate. You know, I'm yeah, doing my yeah, my my bro. Right. What, what Mark Watts taught us. You know, yeah, enunciate yeah, the word. Yeah, Shimon and on. <laughs> oh, what we got left, Ben? Oh man. Next, this or that, tacos or burritos? This Simple. Or th- Simple it's question. It's the easiest question possible, and yeah. I hope you three get Every, it right. Hey, hey, every, everybody Who goes it, first? Everybody say, everybody say it on three. One, two, three. Tacos. Taco burrito. <laughs> <laughs> tacos. <laughs> what are you doing, bro? Are you tacos? This is why. Tacos. This is why. This is why. One. You can get more per bite in a burrito. Also, how many? T- oh, hold on, hold on. Are, are we talking crunchy or soft shell taco? Crunchy. Whatever you prefer. It don't. Yeah, crunchy. whatever you prefer. Crunchy. Let's go crunchy. If you yeah. are crunchy, okay. One crunchy taco. You bite into it. You bite it another time. It's immediately falling apart, and now you have to use a fork or you have to use your finger to scoop it up. Two. If it's a soft shell taco, you cannot fit as much as you can into a burrito. Burrito, pound for pound, you are getting more flavor with every single bite. Also, a mobile food. It is very difficult to travel with a taco with stuff falling out all over the place. Burrito, one hand, bite, I'm driving. One hand, bite, I'm filling out my taxes. It's easy. Taco has a day, Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, bam. (laughs) Just shut it down. Well, how about this? How about this, right? <laughs> You're right. Bur- burrito, you can take with you. I mean, shit, it's a carry-on, right? You, you can take it wherever you want. They, yeah, that's a good Taco point. Taco demands your respect. It demands <laughs> you sit down. You sit down and you finish me before you leave the table. Yeah. Taco. Hey, I'm hey, Taco. And also, and also being, being from Southern California, the best. Street tacos. Street tacos? Street tacos. And that's kind of where I'm at. Oh, is the street on the, tacos. On the open grill, they chopping it up real nice, real fresh. A little cilantro, a little, little cilantro, ooh, little onions. With, with, with the double tortilla. Ooh. And then usually I, those, I, I respect. Those are usually the soft taco version. Yeah. And yeah, and and, and it's usually soft taco, the street taco. So that's where I'm at. Did you did you that's chime right. in, Ben? Did you chime in? Did, were you that's able? Right. You said taco, I think, right? No, I said burrito. I'm oh, like oh, it was, oh, 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 it was two in it. So it was me and me and Shane, and then Ben and Bart. So the bees. Me, and, me, and, me and Ben are on the same page with burritos and with ski lifts. <laughs> <laughs> in the Twitch, in the Twitch chat. Let me see. What, go that. What you saying, Ben? I'm gonna say I can't add anything to why I would choose burrito yeah. taco. Brock laid it out brilliantly. <laughs> yep, that's what that's what Rome Freak said in the tr- uh, in the Twitch chat here. It says Brock really thought about this. He laid it out. <laughs> 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 and then Roger Dodger says I like I like Brock's mind. He approaches everything with logic and efficiency. Oh my God. <laughs> what is this? What is this? You're right. Oh! Wait, 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 you were those last two people. Right. Roger oh, Dodger. Right. Yeah, Roger the Dodger. Roger no, Dodger. Right. Roger Dodger. Hit me up on Twitter. I'm gonna learn you something real good. <laughs> uh oh. We, we, we gonna we gonna further this conversation, Roger Dodger. Oh. Okay. And then Ro- Rome Freak says, I feel like the topic has been on Brock's mind before, eh? <laughs> he's been thinking. He he's been thinking about that one. But then Big B says, Nachos are the best. To be honest. Yes, they're all there. And then the e, oh. Eeyore said he's a taco guy. So we had a little, you know, a little back and right. forth. Thanks. Good a, little, a, little, a, a little mix in there. I like that. Yep, yep. And then also Eeyore throws in there, I like taco salads, the ultimate taco. Mm. 
<laughs> you get, he said, you get away. You see Next that, ER? Oh, Next man. question. <laughs> Thanks, Roasted Bananas. Yes, I am feeling better. Should be returning to campus soon. Um, a little under the weather, so getting back. So are we done with this or that, man? Was that it? One final list or that. One more. Okay. A TikTok dance. So would you rather learn a TikTok dance or do an Instagram challenge? I'm. It would be Instagram challenge. I just need to know what it is, obviously. Obviously, know what that challenge is. I am not dancing on TikTok. I'm sorry, because that's not dancing. Anymore. That is not dancing. This this yeah. is not dancing. <laughs> this this your hand, this your upper body. That's not dancing. We could go back to MJ on that. MJ, it's your whole. You got your leg popping up in the air and everything. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go with Instagram challenge because although I would not want to do either. Usually, IG challenges at least come with like a donation or oh, raising yeah. awareness. Another so reason why I'll do I will do IG I'm, challenge. If if I'm gonna look like a fool and something and do something I don't want to do, at least I'll do it for a good cause. For a good cause. There you yeah, go. Yeah, like I go. did. I did the ice bucket challenge, and that was a cool yeah. I did too. I did too. Yeah. I did the ice bucket. The, the whole the, the whole TikTok <clears throat> thing, like it just it. it it misses my brain. I don't get it. I, I'm not gonna well, you have about 13 years to figure it out because you have a daughter. So <laughs> yeah, that's very. Oh, yeah. Lord Jesus, please. <laughs> next, next topic. Next question. Well, that's that's it right there, Broski. Yeah, um, or Ben, what was your answer? Instagram challenge all day. TikTok yeah. dances. Not. They're just. They're lame. Like I. They're lazy. <laughs> they're lazy. Yeah. If, that's a lot of money, so you can't knock. I don't <clears throat> knock the hustle. I just well, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not gonna knock that part, but yeah. other than that, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'm doing it. So, not cool. Not, not for cool. me. All right. All not, right. That was this or that, I'm on. All right. Thank you, Ben. Now, Ben, you gotta get, you gotta cut, right? I'm gonna run. I'm gonna keep recording, so you continue to do your thing, man. All right. I got, t I got ten minutes. All right. So I got interview the cow coaches. All right, I got the game, baby. I got Shane and Brock here for a little bit. Ben, have a great rest of your day. I'll ben, keep the, always a pleasure. Thanks. I'll burrito, keep. If I ever see you in Madison, if you're here with the Big Ten Network, we're having a burrito. Yes. Bam. You got it. They make you burritos in Wisconsin. Burritos. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I thought, I thought it was just cheese curds and, and beer. Cheese curds and, and beer. And all you can drink milk, yeah. baby. And that Miller Lite. <laughs> Miller Lite. That's Cold all it is. Milk and cheese curds. Oh Cold man. Hey, I'm and I'm lactose intolerant, so yeah, I got to go. I yeah. got to go. Stay away. Sorry, Ben. Have a great day. So we're gonna keep this train rolling. So we'll get into some of the little quick hitting topics here, and one of the ones I was bringing up. It's something that's been known, and we've been talking about it. And I think I know y'all heard about it too. Is the verdict, or you know, Apple and Epic they had beef for about a year, and they went to yeah, trial, and yeah. the verdict came out. And the verdict, I'm gonna read here to you here. And so it was a uh, district attorney, um, <clears throat> or not district attorney, uh, U.S. District Judge Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers. She ruled last Friday to Epic failed to prove that Apple was a monopoly, basically. And in right. such, it now owes Apple revenue commissions as back payment. So that's a lot of money. I don't know what that dollar uh, amount is. But, uh, but, but, also they were, but they also said that Epic could use Apple's um, platform for in-game purchases, correct? Um, let me see. Let me see. I'm not sure about that. But it did say the judge also ruled that Apple cannot keep developers from directing customers to alternative payment methods. Yes. And that's what Apple that's, did. Apple, yeah, that's what, that was the issue. Yeah, you know, so Apple I said, think. okay, so when you go into an app to buy Fortnite or download Fortnite, mm -hmm. Apple basically rigged it to where instead of they paying that, thir exactly, it's paying that, thir of that 30% that was going to uh, Epic, I mean, going to Apple, then that then they, they, they somehow programmed it to where they got it. Majority of, of the money in their so pockets. It's, it's because it's, it's because Fortnite was free, so Apple wasn't making any money off but, of all these. It was, but it was the you know the skins, all the skins that yeah, you buy so, to put uh, on your yeah. character. Yes. In the game, Apple so wanted a cut of that because so it was Apple a free felt app. like we're not yes be, be, because the app is free and because the additional stuff we're not getting a cut of. 
why mm-hmm. should we let you on our platform when we're Correct. Like, okay, I get it. Right, okay. because it was already on their platform and they had an agreement. And what Epic tried to yep. do is basically go beyond the agreement, basically. They already signed it and try to, you know what, we even though we signed this agreement, print. we're going to try to do this. Print. We're going to try to get away yeah, with this. And it didn't happen. So I'll continue reading here. It says, the judge also ruled that Apple cannot keep developers from directing customers to alternative pay methods outside the App Store, citing uh, California competition laws. Y'all live out there. Y'all know how California law is. It is it's rough. <laughs> They don't give nobody no breaks out there. So the ruling also has massive implications for foregoing, uh, ongoing uh, antitrust suits in the gaming industry and particularly for the mobile gaming world. So uh, Governor, or not Governor, Judge uh, got Rodriguez Rogers' decision means developers can funnel iOS users to other payment methods, cutting Apple out some commissions and increasing their own profit margins. So... This is basically started last summer or last spring, basically May of yeah. May of 2020, and now, yeah. you know, across the board. I remember talking to this. You know, we talked about this on a podcast when it first came out, and this now that now the verdict's out. It's like, oh man, now so it doesn't hurt the game. You know, obviously it doesn't hurt the the developer game. It's gonna basically, you know, Epic is getting their their just due in terms of their punishment. Obviously, have to pay back, but they got money. Definitely. They got yeah. a lot of money. They got it. Yeah, I, I love I love the ruling because not only because for, she agreed with Apple saying that Apple is not like a monopoly, right? And r- really, in the sense of it, like just because they're popular and because they've been able to attract more customers than anything else, doesn't necessarily make them a, a monopoly at all. Yeah. And it, it would go like if she was to rule that, that would go against so many different other businesses and, and all that yeah. jargon, like. Mm-hmm. Apple just did a, just built a platform that was just better and it attracted more more users and they shouldn't be penalized for doing that. So I agreed with that and I like that ruling. And yeah. then I like that that just because that you can't restrict or choose who is on your platform and, and where the money goes and mm-hmm. like that's now that sounds more like a monopoly than than just having a dominant platform. In right. Sense. Yeah, because yeah. like, I remember like when I first heard of everything, I was just like, "Come on, Epic!" I mean, I seen <laughs> um, between the time we were at E3, uh, Brock, remember there, yep. and the year. So the year before that is when Epic first had their big booth on the E3 right. floor, and this E3, this booth was basically like we were talking about Godzilla earlier, the Godzilla of of, of booths and <laughs> the space that you get at e3 is something like you know for every for every square foot it's like a hundred dollars per square foot so this is a lot of money and they had this booth that was at least half a football field long and a whole football field wide so 50 by 50 basically they had two stories they had a first floor and a second floor in this booth so i knew they had paid well over millions of dollars for this booth in their first and this was 2015 when the game first came out and so i was just like Wow, they are, they good. They got a lot of money. Yeah. You know, that, that game is helping them, their pockets out. So when I saw that, and then, then obviously this hit last year, five, basically five years after the fact, mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, Epic is really trying to, they just trying to get it, you know, just take it, take everything, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. man. And so they, I knew then that eventually they were going to get not, you know, obviously it's not a big punishment. They just got to pay back money. Nobody's going to jail here. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's basically a white collar. Right, it's right. a white collar crime, but still, there, there is something. You know, they got. You know, they got discipline, and now this uh, says yes. a lot to the other developers in in the world in this space. Hey, you know, just make sure, just stick to the script, stick, stick to there the agreement. Go. Yep. You know, and not try to do something. You know, under the table. That's what it was. A little one of one of them under the table things. You know, they were trying to get away with because, you know, they, they're already get, making a lot of money. Well, you know, oh, nobody's not going to say nothing. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Not California. <laughs> not, not in California. Not in Cali. Not in California. You know, I know they got because it was the, what's the one, um, the boyfriend, girlfriend. If you live with your girlfriend or boyfriend for more than six months, you're like automatic married. Squatter, uh, yeah, some something like right. squatter or something, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so just, just so. entitled, uh, yeah, yeah. So just so you know, anybody in the Twitch chat, if you're deciding to move to California with your significant okay. other, 
Uh, y'all make sure. Just make sure. Just make sure y'all on good. Y'all good. Just make sure y'all read the good. terms and conditions <laughs> of being <laughs> of being a boyfriend and a girlfriend in California. Yeah, sure, read the fine print. Yeah. So uh, and then the next big one here was another big one that uh, hit the scene. <clears throat> obviously, not within the last year. Was the big DCMA Twitch laying out streamers cutting off their you know erasing their their mm. their vods their VODs if they were playing you know, copyrighted music. And so I just got, you know, me being a streamer, I got this uh, long email from Twitch, you know, ex stating that now we can we can use music, but it was like kind of contradicting itself. Let me see, I'm gonna try to find yeah. it. I'm gonna try to find it here on my, my email here and read this thing out loud because it's confusing. You let me know. Yeah. You know, I don't and know. I'll let you, I mean, and like, like most of those things, it's not an accident that it's confusing. That's, right. It's very intentional. Right. So here we go. So I got the article in front of me, and then I got the email right here because I know Eeyore, he streams, a, few, a lot of the greenies stream in here. So it said, Amon Green TV, we are excited to announce that we've entered into an agreement with the National Music Publishers Association, so the NMPA, to provide or to build a productive partnership between Twitch and music publishers. As the part of this agreement, we want you to let you know about a new process that we are creating that participating music rights holders can opt in to report certain uses of their music, which is more flexible. You, you've, you've already lost me. <laughs> <laughs> I, have no idea. I have no idea what you're, what you're even talking about. Right. It just, I mean, it just, it's stating that now they got an agreement with music, you know, people that obviously the artists, the yeah. companies that produce and distribute music. And saying that at a high level, this new process, you know, in the distinct of the DC uh, DMCA, focuses on the f going forward flagrant uses of music to start the warning. And basically, in a nutshell, they're not going to just cut your bot off. They'll at least notify you. Be like, all right, they'll give you a, a warning process. Strike one, you know, you can't play Biggie and Pac. Strike two, we told you once before. Right. Then strike three, at least they're giving you a warning. Because last year, yeah, sure, that's fair. Yeah. Last year was no warnings. It is, you just you, if you logged into your Twitch account, and then you had about uh, all your last weeks of videos that were gone. Just gone. You know, yeah. and then obviously for the little streamer that's trying to build their name, you know, work. This is their job. It's like, wait a minute, my my, my money. You know, this is my my way to, <laughs> to make money. Right. You know, it's gone. You know, to the Twitch chat, I like to see hear what yeah. anybody has any feedback on that because obviously that is a it's 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 a rule. But it's kind of like the NFL guys. It's not really clear. <laughs> it's like, what are you, right. what are you yeah, saying? Like, like the taunting, area. like the taunting yeah. rule. You know, that's something me and Mike Wall have been talking about on, my, on our oh, podcast. So the taunting that's rule so in college and in pro is like, come on, like, what are you going? Like, it's, oh, it's, it's ridiculous. You know, because but, yeah, you know, go, I, go, Shane. No, I, I it, it's, it's, as far as the football is concerned, I mean, that's part of what fans love that's part right. of what makes yeah. football unique i mean if you can fight in hockey why can't you spin a football and talk some shit after <laughs> after, after a great catch like come on right man. you know and, and pete carroll put it really uh put in a, a, a really he made a good point he said so now you're telling me i gotta train my players from an emotional side when i'm right. telling them to be excited you know have fun you know right. he's a he's a fun coach you could tell he has fun and but to tell him, okay, to tell my now player that's celebrating a sack or a touchdown that I, now they got to turn away from the player or the sideline yeah, yeah. before you celebrate. Uh, oh, so you're in the moment, but you just got to go a little bit too five feet that way yeah. before you do your thing, your thing you know, yeah. of, of celebration. Yeah. So, you know, the, so we got Roger Dodger says here in the Twitch says that I've been asking around uh, to other streamers who play lots of music, which I've done. I've been listening to um, – uh, Lauren, who I just recommended to you, Brock, mm. about the um, yeah. um, the Madden shoutcast, and she yeah. was, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I was listening to her stream. She's playing a, 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 a music soul child, Jill Scott, and nice, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, wait a minute, I thought it was, you know, what's the <laughs> rule here? It, it, it's kind of confusing. Right. So it says not one of them has had any of their videos taken down um, for the D. MCA. I think Twitch is still trying to cover themselves with all the liability, yeah. obviously, because like I said, when you erase that VOD, that's money for that streamer, you know, yeah. when it's uh, because when it's uh, taken down, basically, because yeah. they use it for clips and you know advertising their their, their Twitch channel. So, yeah. you know. All right, guys, I have to get, I have to go. All right, Shane. Thank you, thank you for yeah, having me. I'm, uh, 
I got to knock some stuff off before our ESTV call. So I'll be seeing you in a second, Amar. Yeah, for sure. So I'm, uh, I am got a couple more things to talk about here on the podcast. Of course, man. Keep well, this shit rolling. Anytime, anytime. But thank you. Uh, yeah. Guys, thank you for sure. Uh, this was fun. Big and we we, we awesome. might we might have to send a note out to uh, Monday Night Football, ESPN, whatever the Ocho, whoever, <laughs> to get us on there to, on. to watch yeah, some Monday Night Football. How players yeah, how players yeah. watch the game exactly. and yeah. commentate. Appreciate but uh, but oh, thank you, next time, thank sir. you both. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. All sure. right. Peace yep. out, Greenies. Yep. See you, Greenies. <laughs> Oh, right. So Ben, you know, he's obviously got the podcast still going. So no, no, no intros, no outros, no uh, roll, roll your boat. But we're going to still get into the uh, the rest of this podcast and stream here. Um, and we're on to game releases. So my game release of the week is a fun, looks like a fun game. Um, I haven't got it yet, but I just found out about it. It is called, let me just make sure I'm saying this name correctly, Kenya Bridges. Oh, Kenya Bridge of Spirits. So Kenya Bridge of Spirits is an action game, action adventure game developed by publisher Ember Lab. The story follows Kenya, a young spirit guy who uses her magical ability. I like this one. So she uses her magic abilities uh, to help the deceased. So somebody who just passed away and people move from the physical world to the spirit world. So obviously seen a lot of movies, you know, about, you know, you know, going to that next level of living um, um, or existence in the world. So this game hits on that premise. So this game is presented as a third person game. And actually it came out uh, uh, earlier this summer, but they're re-releasing it. And, and it's like I said, single player mode and it's $39.99. I believe that's on uh, Steam. So you could download it there. And I believe it's also on PlayStation 4 and 5 and Microsoft Windows so on PC as well. So action adventure game looks really cool it, it reminds me of um, uh, Legend of Zelda Breath, Breath of the Wild or Bre Breath of the Wind Breath of the Wind I always mess that up um, um, but fun game and adventure game you know any game like that that actually hits on something that that everybody's trying to answer that ask, ask that question what uh what happens when you pass you know what can you do what can what, what can't you do so I like uh, the premise of that game so check it out that's my game release. It's not very much, you know, not, it's on all the all the platforms. Uh, download it, buy the disc. You know me, I'm a hard disc guy. I'm gonna check it out here. Look into the Twitch chat. So we going I'm gonna lay heavy on y'all right now. Um, so we have big big B says they played they played music on Twitch for years before they started copyright. Yes, definitely, they did there. And uh, yeah, Eeyore, yes, Halo Infinite. The first is two flights coming out in the next two weeks. Uh, we got this weekend and next weekend. That's going to be Halo Flights coming out here. And then uh, Roman Freak, he said, uh, is that the, tw oh, it's, yeah, it's the, it's the 23rd to the 26th is a technical preview for Halo uh, Infinite. I'm excited for that. And then it says, then you got Roman Freak says, we might get a Breath of the Wild 2 announcement soon. Oh, with a hard release date. Oh, okay. That's one of my favorites. I'm still walking through that game. Didn't quite finish it, but there's so much to do in that game. It's so much to do, um, but a fun game. But that's kind of like I've watched the video for um, for Kenya and uh, the spirit, the bridge of spirits, um, which is cool. And like I said, that premise, the whole idea of she's escorting people to the next level of living, which is, I think is very cool. And that kids get to experience that. Gamers get to kind of go down that aisle, that role of questioning where do we go after we pass. So, you yeah. know, I like that. So wrap this show up here. We got to finish up. With what's on stream, we don't have the, the cool um, intro like we usually have with Ben and John, uh, but we'll get right into it. So I'm going to just I'm gonna row my boat gently down the stream. So was, I'm on Netflix, and I want y'all to check out this series. It's on Netflix, and if you haven't watched it already, I'm pretty sure it's been around actually for about three years. And it's called Explain. And so Explain is a, I'll say... Kind of like a doc series but it has a lot of episodes and usually doc series don't have that many episodes but this one has and it's a series from fox production um, that digs into the wide range of topics such as the rise of cryptocurrency um, why diets fail uh the why the new world of k-pop which i found out about that for myself probably like three years ago like k korean pop music and 
the bands and the culture behind it and how it got started. And then so I say I'll point out some of my favorite episodes um, was uh, most recent episodes that came out actually here in September. September it was an episode that came out on September 10th called, about hurricanes and why and how they're getting stronger. And it obviously has to do with global warming um, on why they're getting st stronger and more frequent in the Gulf of, um, the Gulf of Mexico or the Caribbean, or Caribbean Sea, uh, the Atlantic, and anywhere across the equator because uh, it has to do with the, the heat in the air, the humidity, the warm water in those environments, you know, along the Gulf Coast, along um, like Hawaii, South Pacific, uh, the Indian Ocean, those areas where it's very, very humid, very hot throughout the year. So that's a very interesting uh, episode of Explain. And then one episode, another one is called Apologies. So basically, it, it talks about how and what a good apology is. And obviously, we see people today going on social media, you know, celebrities, um, people we don't know, but apologizing and what makes a good apology. So that whole episode breaks down what makes a good apology because it, it says here in the caption, apologizing is tough. And this and in this era of public uh, media, a public mea culpa's um, forgiveness isn't guaranteed. So what makes a good apology and why does it hold, hold so much power? Um, so I definitely enjoy that one. And then the other, it's a, it's a whole bunch of topics. So we got plastic surgery episode, hurricanes, your skin, like what's on it, um, what helps it, you know, grow and not grow. Uh, chess, the game of chess, uh, the end of oil, so oil in the world. Uh, so episode on dogs. So I know people, they love dogs. Everybody's a dog person. A lot of people are. I'm not saying everybody is, but a lot of people are. Um, then there's an episode on flags, you know, how important the flag is, not just the American flag, but all flags uh, around the world. And then some of the recent, another recent episode was royalty, and then an episode just on sugar. So for the gamers out there, I think you need to watch that sugar episode. And they actually did, um, this episode is actually a couple years old. I think they did it in their season one, which came out in 2018. It's on esports. So they talk about esports back in 2018. So it's a three seasons of Explain on Netflix. So check it out. It's fun. They talk about fast food, I think, too. It's interesting. I say I like it because all the interesting topic, topics, it's very educational. Um, you, could, you know, you hear, you learn about all this stuff going on in our world. And Roger the Dodger, I go say, oh, hurricanes. I thought you said Burger King. <laughs> no, hurricanes. No, the, the tropical storms that, that have been disrupting the United States every year. Like we had Hurricane Ida uh, destroy the Gulf Coast this year and postpone games and cancel games. That's why the Packers had to play the New Orleans Saints in uh, Jacksonville for the first uh, week of the NFL season. So check out Explain. It's on Netflix. It's been on it's been on Netflix for like three years now. And so it's three seasons of it. It's about eight to ten episodes per season. So I say check it out to get educated on certain things in the world. I mean, they even have, I think they do one on marriage and love and all that stuff. So check it out. Get educated, you know, a little bit. And when you get off that game, they aren't, episodes are short. They're not real long. They're only like 24 minutes long. So you're not there for, you know, hours on end. It's, like, it's quick in and out. I and mean, we binged it in a weekend. We watched all three seasons in three days. It was quick. So uh, that's it. So we're at the end of the podcast. So I want to appreciate Everyone coming in tonight, great conversation with uh, Shane and Brock and Ben today, and also from the Twitch chat, the Twitch chat, all y'all, all the greenies were live today, Eeyore, uh, Deny jumped in with the follow or with the sub, Big B, as usual, in here dropping, Rome Freak, haven't seen in a while, jumped in here, Big Boom Hauer also, also. I'm excited about the Halo Infinite, man, I'm so geeked up about that, uh, Eeyore, as usual. And if I didn't mention your name, I appreciate you for jumping in this Twitch chat. And then also for everybody that's been a part of my fundraiser, just, you know, to explain it, you know, it's full disclosure. It was weird. It just got basically shut down for some reason. And I, I emailed uh, Tiltify, who was helping me with the donations. And so I'm going to continue. I haven't heard back from him yet, but I'm going to continue with um, um, finishing off with the raffle because I know a lot of you uh, jumped in a raffle to win a helmet to win some controllers, some headsets. So I will be doing the raffle, um, trying to think either uh, probably tomorrow night and 
you know, online. Or I'll, I'll stream, obviously, stream it, and then we'll get everybody's prizes mailed out to you. Whoever is picked for the winners of the helmet, um, I think it was a you know Preston Smith helmet signed by him, um, controller from uh, Power A headsets from Lucid Sound, and then my jersey, eight by ten, other little items that were up for raffle for the fundraiser. Um, for the Gamers Outreach fundraiser. So that still will happen. We're going to do that tomorrow night. We're going to tally up all the names and then obviously pick a winner for the raffle. Just want to let everybody know that and pass the word along. Whoever um, put in a donation um, for the Gamers Outreach fundraiser for the, um, the gold carts for kids in the Wisconsin Children's Hospitals that will. So we. So I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a donate the rest of the funding to get one gold cart built. So it's just needed, I think it was around two grand to get one cart built. So I'm going to donate the rest for my um, on my Green Foundation to make sure we hit our goal. So we definitely did it. So again, appreciate everybody jumping in the stream and listening to the podcast. And so download this podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. Apple Podcasts, iHeart, Spotify, um, Amazon, wherever they, you download your podcast. And then rate us and review us because that's very important. Obviously, that keeps us going. It keeps the stream. that keeps the podcast going. I'm going to always stream. Um, I've been feeling under the weather. That's why I haven't been streaming as much. And now I'm... I'm getting my energy back uh, slowly but surely, so I'm going to be streaming a little bit more like tomorrow night, starting off there. Um, but yeah, give us that feedback, rate us, review us, download us. There's a lot of episodes. I don't know. I say the uh, the podcast area probably has the exact number of how many podcasts we actually have, um, and you can check that out here. So we had the Kid 87. Oh, and yeah, thank you. Um, what's good? Uh, I'm good, man. I'm doing good. How about yourself? And Ron Freak, always enjoy. Oh, thank you, man. Always enjoy. That's what we we're striving to do. Have fun on this stream. Just have a good conversation. And welcome in the Twitch chat to ask, to add in the questioning as well. And then we have another Wise Got Game. How you doing? Welcome to the uh, the stream as well. And so I will be back on tomorrow, tomorrow night to hand out the... Uh, uh, to pick the winners of the raffles that we had for the last two months of uh, fundraising we did for the go-kart. So we'll get that done tomorrow night, and then I'll get everything mailed out to y'all in the next coming weeks. So I appreciate y'all. hope everyone have a good rest of your hump day Wednesday, and uh, see you next week on the Mon Green's Gamers Lounge. Peace.